What's up, Wizards? It's Deb, SBMTG. We like it of magic here to finish off these aftermath spoilers. We had 30 of them to look at yesterday. You haven't seen it yet? Go check it out. Link in the description. But today, we're going to finish it off. We're going to finish the entire set off by looking at 18 cards, which is a uh, note to Wizards, just pro tip, a normal amount of cards to look at for a preview day. I just feel like every spoiler season lately, they've been dumping like 50 cards a day on us, and there's something unceremonious about it is that the word i don't know it just kills all the hype when there's too many cards to look through but that said we're going to again finish off this standard legal set today i keep getting that question yes it's standard legal apparently this is like a pretty confusing product for a lot of people distributors included yuck yuck so i'm gonna do a whole other video about like how i feel about this set and the results may shock you but for now let's just look at the cards that's what's important really is the cards now you know how this works we're gonna start with cards i think are kind of bad and then we're gonna slowly work our way up build a fever pitch to the cards i think are Okay, so that means that a card has to go first, and this time it's Harness Snubhorn. Snubhorn is three and a white for a 2-5 dino with Vigilance, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, here comes the excitement. Return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a reanimation spell that Dev doesn't like. We finally found one. <laughs> every, time, every time a new reanimation spell comes along, I'm like, well, this is the best card they ever printed. You guys seen this card yet? <laughs> oh, can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, Dev, it's a five mana reanimation spell. This is a four mana reanimation spell that you have to wait a whole turn on, and then it has to get through for combat damage and like not die that whole time that's bad i'm not fooled this is a bad card <laughs> hate to snub it like that but we got other cards to look at like under city upheaval next this is three mana one and two green for a sorcery undergrowth it's just random undergrowth ability distribute x plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control where x is the number of creature cards in your graveyard as you cast this spell Creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn. Also not fooled by this. I want to really like this card. You guys know how much I like his stick fingers. He's a cool guy. And I like like Urborg Lurgoyf. And like, I like having a bunch of dudes in my graveyard. I talk about it all the time. Too much, in fact. But even so, this card looks like it might be really slick in that deck. But uh, it's probably not. So <laughs> we should probably move on. Like maybe this is a commander card. But I still feel like there's a lot of setup this involves. And not actually as much payoff as you might think. So... I'm going to keep moving on this one, but hopefully I'm wrong and there's like a ridiculous combo and the card is amazing, but I'm not seeing it. So let's check out Death Rattle Oni. I really want to like Dr. O here. This is seven mana, six and a black for a five, four demon spirit with the flash. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature that died this turn. When Death Rattle Oni enters the battlefield, destroy all other creatures that were dealt damage this turn. All right, so I got to admit, I'm torn on this dude. I, like I said, I want to like this dude a lot. There's a bunch of like relatively common, like not Christmas land post combat scenarios where the dude is actually kind of good. You know, your opponent swings in, you chump block with a couple of dudes, bing bang, you get a three mana five, four that kills two of their guys. Okay. Okay. That seems okay. It doesn't seem like that is an incredibly rare occurrence, but the dude is going to sit in your hand until exactly that happens, which I don't love a lot of the time. Plus like you know, Black has a lot of, like, really good cards right now, so you have to be an all-star to get a deck slot, and I'm not sure that this actually does. Maybe it's, like, really swingy, and it actually is better than it looks or something, so I actually want to try this card out a lot, but my... Uh, the spike half of me just cannot believe that this card is actually playable. Let's look at a run of removal spells up next, starting with Tolarian Contempt. This is five mana, three and two blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you put a rejection counter on each creature your opponents control. At the beginning of your end step, for each opponent, choose up to one target creature they control with a rejection counter on it. That creature's owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Trash card, I'm pretty sure. I think that this is kind of like tempting, but it's a five mana removal spell that doesn't even remove the first guy <laughs> you know it just puts it on top no normally but sometimes that can be really annoying right to put a creature on top of your opponent's library kind of replaces their draw step which sucks <laughs> it's like really really aggravating a lot of the time but in that case they have the chance to put it on the bottom so it's basically a removal spell in that case and then on your next turn it'll be a removal spell Again, if they had a bunch of guys, so it works really well against tokens, I guess. So, like, I don't, I want to say I don't hate this card, but I do have a fair amount of contempt for this thing. I just think it's mostly unplayable at five mana. It wants to be a blue sweeper so bad, but just, like, 
It isn't. Blue has just got some really bad sweepers lately. You guys remember phasing of Zalfir? That was going to be a decent card. Never, never. This Blue cannot sweep the board. I'm sorry. But the next card is actually pretty good. This is Animus Might. Three mana, two and a green for a sorcery that costs two less to cast if it targets a legendary creature you control. Target creature you control deals damage equal to twice its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. I'm honestly not sure this is going to like make it in any legendary centric deck in standard. A lot of them aren't green. Not a lot of decks in standard are green, it turns out. So we'll see about it. But as it stands, it is sorcery speed, which is honestly a little bit lame, even for the one mana. But it's a bite effect. It doesn't, the thing doesn't fight back, you know. It deals damage equal to twice its power, which is like actually really, really good. So just a one mana, even though it's sorcery speed, just a one mana removal spell in these legendary decks is probably going to take out just about anything. Like even if you target your own two power legend with this, it's still dealing four to something, which kills most of the creatures, although not the most significant creatures in the format. So uh, you know, this could sneak in a couple of copies if there are some legendary centric green decks. It basically has to go in, so it's a pretty decent spell. So let's look at filter out next. This is three mana, one and two blue for an instant. Return all non creature, non land permanents to their owner's hands. Okay, that is a little bit more what I am talking about. This is a pretty good sideboard card, if nothing else, but you can reset your own Reckoner Bangbusters, wedding announcements, sagas, planeswalkers, whatever you're trying to do with this card while also messing your opponent up a good bit likely but you know you're also doing that for them so i don't point that out you know but still this is great in terms of getting rid of like treasure tokens and blood tokens and i guess in other formats there's like food tokens and all kinds of nasty stuff you know again in terms of like getting rid of planeswalkers and artifacts and stuff like that card could be pretty good you know mono white and a couple of other decks in the format tend to shell up behind planeswalkers and enchantments and stuff like that so i could see this being like halfway decent in a match or two but again mostly a sideboard card and for what it's worth i could see this being pretty good in like commander and even some older formats depending on kind of what's cooking in the format at the time so i like this card a good bit but i'm not sure it's making a main deck anytime soon but <laughs> very well could let's check out king removal spell of the day here it's blot out everybody three mana two and a black for an instant target opponent exiles a creature or planeswalker they control with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control Playable magic card, no questions asked, I think. It's not going to get a four of anytime soon, but we just had a card like this in the format a couple of years back, something like that, and it was played, again, as a one or two of in a lot of decks. This one, Exiles, this is a pretty slick card, man. This is okay, I think. You know, again, it's been decent in the past. Doesn't mean a card's going to be decent now. Like, does Mono Black play this card? Probably not, to be honest. <laughs> like, does like a blue black control or Esper control deck play this card? I'm not actually sure, you know? They have access to like Void Rend and stuff like that. So, this card has to find a place in the format. Might have to wait till rotation, but this effect has been playable before, even without exile, you know? And it's another thing that like kills Kaya and other difficult to kill creatures and planeswalkers. So, you know, not a bad card. Gets around Ward and Hexproof and Blood Indestructible, yada yada. So, like, there's a lot of cool things about a card like this. And I'm glad that we have this effect back in standard at exactly the right rate, at exactly the right speed. So, you know, it'll probably see play here and there, but not be a super like an all-star or anything, but that's kind of what I like in my removal spells. Not every removal, removal spell should be go for the throat or infernal grasp, you know, every now and again, your format needs these instead of those ridiculous cards. So I'm a fan. We made it out of the removal vein finally, so let's keep it pushing and finish off the best uncommons from the whole set, really. Looking at some tribal stuff here, but still, I promise these are good cards. Let's look at Kolagon Warmonger up next. This is three mana, it's two and a red for a 3-2 Ogre Warrior with haste. When it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Hey, it's card for dragons, which is actually shaping up to be like a halfway decent deck. Now, you can't play all the three drops in the world in your dragons deck, but there aren't a whole lot of three drop dragons to play. You need something to bridge the gap, and we got Sarkin 
We got the unsparked Sarkin, who actually looks awesome in Dragon's decks, to play in the three drop slot. And now we have this too, you know? It doesn't virtually guarantee necessarily that you get a dragon. Depends on how many dragons you're playing. But you'll probably get a dragon off this if you built your deck right. And it'll happen the turn this enters the battlefield. Three mana, three power haste isn't the worst thing in the world either. This could easily trade with a two drop. It's not exactly what you want, but even if it does that, it got you some card advantage if you got that dragon when you attacked. So I think this card is cool, man. It goes in like historic decks that play dragons because I think those are the ones that play dragons on arena. But if there's a standard deck, this might have a home in it. But another tribal thing we got is Markov Baron. I've had multiple people tell me this is their favorite card in the set. This is three mana, two and a black for a two, two vampire noble with convoke and life. Lifelink. Other vampires you control get plus one plus one. Also has madness two and a black. One last hurrah for vampires in standard. This might be the thing to tie the whole room together and finally make it like a viable standard aggro deck. Rakdos Vampires has needed something like this for a while. And while this might not be the thing to finally push it, I'm not sure that like tribal decks in standard are going to be great outside of soldiers. Soldiers is right there proving me wrong, but is vampires going to be the one <laughs> to stand up to soldiers and be like, I'm a tribal deck too. I guess we'll find out, right? But this card could be a big part of it. For the most part, that deck doesn't want to tap its vampires to convoke this out, unless you're talking about like Voldar and Epicure or something like that. Usually it doesn't want to attack, right? So, but if you do be, if you, if you do be able to play this, if, if you do find yourself playing this for free or like one mana or something, it is probably just a ridiculous card. <laughs> So, you know, they threw the lifelink on there. I don't love three mana two twos and lifelink usually isn't enough, but sometimes it's going to be a free two two that instantly anthems the guys that well, all your guys, but especially the guys that didn't tap to play it. So just a sweet little guy, man. Obviously you can madness it into pie. I should probably at least mention the fact that it has madness. So that's probably way more relevant in like historic vampires, but I will say I will say we got blood tokens that come from vampires. Blood Tithe Harvester, Madness this into play when I discard it to the blood token. All that costs four mana. That's a little bit much, but it still might be okay. So really sweet card. <laughs> really sweet card that multiple formats are going to want. We Be it Commander, Historic Brawl, all the way up to Standard. Again, really hope this is the thing that makes vampires a, dex, a deck, but... Even if that happens, it's only going to be a deck for like three months. But that's enough time. That is enough time to have some fun. But we got to keep moving. Let's look at Gold Forge Thopteryx here. This is two mana, Azorius colors, a blue and a white, for a 1-3 artifact dinosaur thopter. <laughs> some types right there. It is flying and lifelink. Each legendary permanent you control has Ward 2. I guess the PNA Lar deck is Jeskai now. That's what this card is for. Not really. This card is kind of for Esper Legends, right? A little bit for Esper Legends. It might make the slot, too. I know that it's not legendary, but currently that deck plays for Thalia, and then it, it fills the two-drop slot with a bunch of garbage. And I, <laughs> nine times, I've seen the Raven Man in that deck, so you know people are scrambling. <laughs> I guess the Raven Man is good if you're going to play Rafine on the next turn. Like That could work, but every time I see the Raven Man in the deck, I'm like, okay, all right. Jadar? Well, all right, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, I think that deck will at least try this in the two-drop slot because they don't really have much cooking besides Thalia. Speaking of Rafine, by the way, an extra instance of Ward seems pretty good. Also combines okay with Thalia, right? Because she's going to make the removal spells and stuff cost more. This is going to make it cost more to target her. and It feels good. Feels good. So, a lot of cool stuff if you're doing like Retadrabic dumb stuff with, <laughs> with this. This will help protect the Retadrabic. So just about any deck that can fit this card and also wants to play Legends, like... I want to try it at least in the two drop slot. I want to want to get up some tricks, some thop tricks with this thing. It looks all right. But now let's look at what is either the best or worst uncommon in the set. I'm not really sure. And it's Reckless Handling. This is two mana, one and a red for a sorcery. Search your library for an artifact card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Shuffle. If that was the entire card, it would be amazing, but it's not. You got to discard a card at random after you tutor. If an artifact card was discarded this way, Reckless Handling deals two damage to each opponent. Oh, cool. So if you randomly made me discard the thing that I searched my library for, I get to deal two damage to each opponent. That's good enough, right? Probably not, honestly. Why does Nahiri even appears on a card? It's kind of bad. 
<laughs> that said, we'll see Nahiri a little bit later, and she's okay. We'll, we'll talk about it. But that said, this card is probably halfway decent in Commander, but it might also be good in like combo decks in Standard and stuff like that. Even if you do end up discarding the artifact, we've seen multiple cards in this set alone. <laughs> you know, we saw a card today that'll let you reanimate whatever artifact that you end up pitching to it if you have to pitch an artifact, right? Random discards just really make me upset and obviously this isn't very good off the top of your library either you know like if you're top decking with this you basically have to discard whatever your tutor for so it's useless if you have another if you have one card in your hand you now have a 50 percent chance of having to discard the thing you tutored for which again nine times out of ten is gonna be terrible so i don't know it doesn't really increase the chances to a, a, a percent that i am, am comfortable playing <laughs> even if i have like two or three other cards in my end i still might discard the thing i tutored for and most of the time i haven't planned for that so <laughs> even if you do plan to discard the thing you tutor for you can't really do that it's a random discard so i just don't like those but again two mana go get any artifact you want it's probably at least a halfway decent card in some format or another so i should point it out but let's get into the rares with plarg and nasari it's another tag team i think this is like the only one in the set though or at least the only one we're gonna look at today this is five mana three and two red for a five four legendary orc efreet at the beginning of your upkeep each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card an opponent chooses a non land card exiled this way you may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost commander card probably skippable i also at first couldn't tell if this was an uncommon or a rare but i am pretty sure it's a rare that's, that's one of the reasons it was the first rare we looked at but at the same time it's also kind of not good it probably should be the first rare that we look at it's five mana that's kind of a lot you have to be very good to be five mana no matter what you are you know and uh, you have to wait a whole turn to get any actual card advantage out of it. And even then, your opponent, if you're only in a two-player game, your opponent can just uh, not let you play the good card. <laughs> That's not, kind of uh, not great. I mean, you could argue this is a five-power thing that generates card advantage every turn. And that's kind of okay. But for the most part, this is not good. Waiting an entire turn to actually use it and giving your opponent some, some agency in the matter, like, no, let's probably... It's probably not play this card, I would imagine, but in Commander, like, okay, you know, no, we got we got three other opponents. There's four of us now. Let's let's take a look at this. But in Standard, it's not playable. I'm sorry. But up next, we got Rocco. We haven't seen Rocco for a few sets. Let's see what his modern life is like. This is Rocco Street Chef. He's Naya colors, just a green, a white, and a, a green, a white, and a red. What's wrong with me? For a 2-4 legendary elf druid. At the beginning of your end step, each player exiles the top card of their library. Until your next end step, each player may play the card they exiled this way. Whenever a player plays a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. It's pretty bad, I'm fairly certain. I mean, it gives your opponent card advantage, and most of the time they can use their card before you can use your card. You know, I guess you could play this for five mana and then happen to rip a two mana instant speed spell off the top of your library when you exile your card on instep or something. And now you got removal to play, Jack. Like, you know, you could do that. Probably almost never going to actually happen. So I'm not like super big on this one. I'm sorry about that. Three mana, two, four. Doesn't die to cut down. Doesn't die to lightning strike. These are like somewhat important stats. And if they do play the thing, you get a plus one, plus one counter. You get a food token that's something. At least it's something. But you gave your opponent card advantage. Not really card advantage because, yes, I acknowledge again that you also get a card that you can play very likely on your next turn. But I don't love that a lot of the time. I just really don't want my opponent to be getting cards, especially if I'm tied up on mana and they just get a card or whatever. Let's go. I don't love it. I don't love it. I'm sorry. I, just, I keep apologizing for cards in this video. There are a lot of cards I do like in this set, but this isn't necessarily one of them. Let's check out Spark Rupture next. This is three mana, two and a white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Why don't you? All right. Each planeswalker with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power and toughness, each equal to the number of loyalty counters on it. Now, if your opponent's playing two or three planeswalkers and you play this, they all become creatures. You can sweep them away, draw cards, whatever. You know, it seems okay. But the real cool thing to do with this is to play those three planeswalkers yourself, right? And then just uh, 
kill them by playing this card and then attacking with your planeswalkers. That is another thing you could do. It's actually kind of sick. But that is kind of a lot of setup, and it seems to me that if you have three planeswalkers out, probably winning the game anyway, right? So I'm just not sure this is going to be worth a slot. But if you want to make like a fun deck and play a flavorful card, that's why the card's in the set. It's flavor. It's just a, a delicious card. But is it actually worth playing? Probably see it. Probably see it on Dank Jank. You probably see it on a bunch of other YouTuber channels trying to make fun stuff happen with it. It'll be entertaining. It will, will it be a good card that sees playing like tournament level tier one decks? No, I don't think so. Sorry. Again, the apologies for cards. I just keep, I keep having to do that. Again, we'll get to some cards I like really soon, but not quite yet because we got to look at deification next. At least I do like this card more than the last one. This is two mana, one and a white for an enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose a planeswalker type. Planeswalkers you control of the chosen type have hexproof. As long as you control a creature, if damage dealt to a planeswalker you control of the chosen type would result in all loyalty counters on it being removed. Instead, all but one of those counters are removed. This is a throwback to worship, isn't it? It's a worship reference, even down to the name and the fact that you have to have a creature on the battlefield to keep it turned on. I like it. It's not anywhere near as annoying as worship, but it is kind of annoying. You know, Earlier I was saying... If you have three planeswalkers on the battlefield, you're probably winning the game. Well, just in case you're not, <laughs> now suddenly your planeswalkers effectively can't be removed. That's kind of great. Uh, Kaya has proven that once a planeswalker has hexproof, it's kind of actually difficult to deal with. But I don't know. We have multiple edict effects in standard. We just looked at another one a second ago. So <laughs> is this as good as I want it to be? It's actually, I don't even think it's that good, <laughs> to be honest. But I do like that you pick a planeswalker type. So. You know, if I have both different Wandering Emperors in my deck and I choose whatever that type is, Emperor, Wandering Emperor, I don't know. But if I, if I choose that type, then suddenly both of them have Hexproof. That's pretty good. And, like, you don't even have to block for them anymore. I mean, you want to keep their loyalty high, so you, you will block for them every now and again. But so long as you have a creature out, you don't necessarily have to in order to keep them alive. So that's cool. And also, most Planeswalkers, uh, Wandering Emperors included, fascinatingly make creatures so it shouldn't be hard to keep this turned on right so really kind of i will say i, I tentatively am a fan of this card but i'm gonna go back to the spike argument of if i have enough planeswalkers for this to like matter i probably a am already winning the game and b could use this slot better in my deck would this be better as a removal spell ask yourself that question would this be better as a card draw spell uh, probably would it be better as a reckon or bank buster likely so again i'm not sure the card has much competitive life but it's going to be a really fun card to play with and that's why i like magic that's why i like magic but last rare of the day before we get to the mythics i really like this card it's jirina Dauntless General. This is Orzov colors. Black and white for a 2-2 legendary human soldier. When an ETB's exile target player's graveyard. You can also sacrifice her and have humans you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Yet another halfway decent card for Esper Legends, so you might want to consider it there. I don't even think it's just a sideboard card. I think it's kind of main deckable. <laughs> Everyone's trying to reanimate something or or sweep the board or both you know <laughs> and if they're playing aggro this is still a good ability to have handy being able to sacrifice her protect the rest of your team during combat or something it's all good man if something goes horribly wrong <laughs> you have her and she's only two mana for all of this it's a lot of effects also just happens to be a soldier which is kind of nice right not every single card in esper legends is a human and not every single card in soldiers is a human but it's really Really, really close in soldiers. I mean, if you wanted every card to be a human, you very easily could. The problem is, is it worth adding black to the blue-white soldiers deck? And the answer is probably yes, honestly. You know, you got Secluded Courtyard, Rafine's Tower if you want to play it in an aggro deck. But if you don't, you got plenty of other untapped lands. You know, Dark Slick Shores, Caves of Koilos, Underground River, they all come to play untapped. Right. So they all make black mana. So you could probably have like, what is that? 16 lands in the deck <laughs> all total. If you wanted them that make black mana, you could easily cast this on turn two. So I don't think that it's too far out to think that they, the soldiers decks might include black, but they'd have to have another good reason to do so. I don't think they do it just for this card, but this is a really, a very, very good start. And by the way, abs and humans might want to play this. That is a deck that exists. You know, you got Katilda plus this. 
both humans and just, ah, I don't know. There's, it seems like there's a lot of places for this card to go day one in a bunch of different formats. I'm not just talking about standard. There's commander and historic brawl, historic at large pioneer and stuff like that. Humans decks actually exist in those formats all the way back to modern. So I think this is a super playable card in a bunch of formats. That's kind of an all-star that very likely won't get like super high in terms of the price. I just think it's going to be one of those cards that people like, and doesn't cost $20. <laughs> and those are the kind of cards I can get behind, especially when they're Orzhov. You know, I like any Orzhov card, but I think I'm actually judging this one objectively. It's one of the better cards in the set, from what I can tell. Well, let's get to motorboat and these mythics here. Let's look at Tyvar the Bellicose first. This is four mana. Two, a black and a green for a 5-4 legendary elf warrior. Whenever one or more elves you control attack, they gain death touch until end of turn. Each creature you control has, whenever a mana ability of this creature resolves, put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana this creature has produced. This ability triggers only once each turn. Boo! It only triggers once each turn. That's kind of lame, but there are some cool combos. I mean, there's like Circle of the Bub Elders. It's whatever this card is on screen. It was just printed a few sets ago and then it rotated and all that, but... I guess in like historic bar, brawl or whatever, you can play this with lad, and then you just put three plus one plus one counters on it every time you tap it. It's good in commander with like Findhorn elves and stuff. Like Findhorn elder, that's the name of the card. Produces two green mana. That's kind of nice. Um, Priest of Titania in commander produces God knows how much green mana whenever it taps. So that's that's kind of neat. But it Marwin, I guess Marwin is a combo. Actually, Marwin is a disgusting combo with this. So, there's some cool stuff you can do in formats that aren't the standard, um, but still, it's not terrible. We got some decent elves in standard. I covered a few of them for Nyssa when we talked about that card, but some of them I didn't. You know, like we got some good elves. We got Glissa and Nyssa. Nyssa's also obviously an elf, <laughs> pretty good on curb with Tyvar. So there's some there's some stuff. We got an elf anthem effect in standard. So like maybe black green elves is really a deck, but I really I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I kind of. Sorry, Tyvar. I'm just not really sure that this sees too much standard play, but it'll see play in other stuff forever. So don't don't feel bad for it. But final card of the day and the set, actually. It just feels so weird to say that after just two days. But I'm the one that wanted a 50-card set. <laughs> More on that in the video where I actually talk about how I feel about this set. <laughs> Let's look at Nahiri, Forged in Fury. This is six mana, but not really. Four, a red, and a white for a 5-4 legendary core artificer. It has affinity for equipment. Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. You may cast equipment spells this way without paying their mana costs. Okay, so affinity for equipments means that you probably get this out for just like four mana a lot of the time, at which point it's a lot better. We just looked at a four mana five four that I wasn't super impressed with, but <laughs> this does like a good bit more than Tyvar a lot of the time. I guess they do kind of both want you to play bad cards in standard, right? And Tyvar's over here like, hey kid, you want to play elves? And here he's like, oh, you got to play equipment to play me. And I'm like, which one of these two death rooms do I actually want to step into? I'm not sure either one of them is actually very fun, but <laughs> one way or the other, we do have these equipment in standard, at least some. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we actually just got a couple of decent new equipments, the new bone splitter. We got Beamtown Boots. Beamtown Beatstick is the name of that card. I want to say Boomstick every time. But anyway, we also have like Eater of Virtue. We have like Rabbit Battery, Blade of the Oni. I could keep naming cards, but that is a lot of editing work. And I've already named a bunch of really good ones, but there's, there's more equipments than that in standard. Obviously, we've been getting swords the last few sets, so we got at least a couple of those to go with this in standard and being able to cast a sword for free is nuts so like, I, like, I do kind of like this card a good bit again if you just go like rabbit battery into equipment on turn two you know eater of virtue or something again like that then suddenly this only costing four mana is actually pretty good if you just have a bunch of one cost equipment in the stack you could feasibly get this down on turn three but then you're not attacking with a creature and you really want to be attacking with a creature the turn that you play this so that you can get some value off of it. So I like this. If it does stay in play more than a turn, you got all your mana untapped guaranteed when you go in the next turn and attack with an equipped creature. So again, just more likely to be able to get that value and actually play the spell. So 
I do kind of like this. Equipment has needed like a big finish type thing for a while now. And I actually think Nahiri might finally be the thing to make it happen. But I say that every time I see a card that I like for equipment and it never really pans out. So <laughs> we'll have to see about it. But I do think affinity for equipment is interesting enough to like kind of get my brain going on this card where normally I see Nahiri and I'm like, I like he has a character. Always bad cards. Every time. If you appear on a card, the card is bad. But <laughs> in this case, I finally, like, I feel like I actually want to play a Nahiri. I said this about the three men in Nahiri, too, didn't I? This is deja vu. Remember the three men in Nahiri? No one does. It was just like two sets ago, and no one remembers that card. <laughs> but again, like I say every time I see a Planeswalker, this is the one, guys. This is <laughs> This is the Nahiri, but I've already seen a bunch of commander players on Twitter and stuff say they can't wait to try and play this card. So we'll see how it does in standard. I think we have the right mix of things to potentially make this work. So I'm not going to say the card is amazing, but I do like it. But that is all we have for this one. Yes, I'm going to do a top 10 cards and probably a top five sleepers. I don't know if we can, <laughs> I don't know if we can go all the way to 10 on sleepers in a 50 card set. And we can, we're still covering 20% of the set when we do a top 10, right? <laughs> theoretically. Feasible. True, just, just, just statistically. Not, not theoretically, it just is. But hey, everybody, you've made it. It's your favorite part of the video, the couch card of the day. I have not forgotten. I will never forget. I would not do that to you. So let's check that out. But while I get set up for it, put down my coffee, stretch out my back. Let's just remind you to like the video if you haven't done it yet. Subscribe also if you haven't done that yet. Check out the Patreon if you want to support my content. You like what I have to say about cards. You just want to see more of my face. Or even if you don't like what I have to say about cards. And you just kind of hate watch. And you're like, this guy's goofy and he doesn't know what he's talking about. If you want to keep hate watching and have that entertainment in your life, support the channel. Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to keep doing it. So <laughs> help me out over there if you want to. If you don't like me. Um... <laughs> And let's look at the couch card of the day. Let's check this out. I want to get a good one. This one feels right. What are you? Oh, okay. That's pretty good. It's SRAM, Senior Edificer, everybody. Everyone's favorite uh, commander, right? Who doesn't like to SRAM? Da, 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 da. SRAM Dunk. It's two mana, one and a white for a 2-2 two, two legendary dwarf advisor. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw yourself a card that's just a sick little <laughs> enchantressy sort of card we were just talking about equipment too fate that we would draw this but either way good card let's get that in the sleeve let me go ahead and put it in the sleeve i've got the sleeve right here don't worry guys sram's going to sleeve it's the you know old board old border one retro frame one gorgeous card really a gorgeous card why isn't that in the cube there's probably not enough auras and vehicles and equipments in the cube to support it but I have dreams. Maybe that'd be a good commander. I can only play white cards, though. It's got to be in the 99 of something. It's probably good in mono white, right? I don't know. I'm just dreaming dreams over here. But anyway, there's your couch card of the day. That was a real burp I had to stifle. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you feel about the set you don't just try to be kind <laughs> let me know how you feel about the set down there in the comment section any of your favorite cards that you're waiting on playing with or whatever let me know about those too i think the set does have some really cool cards in it so let me know how you feel about everything the set the drapes the stuff whatever you know background persona 5 stuff back here whatever you like just to <laughs> point it out in the comment section <laughs> but anyway i love you guys and i'll catch you cats later man i'm deb from the place Thanks for watching, wizards. Spread love and be kind.